are in the garage right now. It's Friday afternoon, 2.45ish, uh, but there's a little bit of a difference in the last time we were here. So if you look down at our input, you'll notice that we're getting almost 1100 watts of solar. The battery's already at 96% and we have plenty of sun left to fill it up for the day. So we tried for a few weeks to get it done with 1000 watts of solar, which was three panels wired together in parallel. We had a lot of voltage drop and just not enough power to get it done. So last week at the end of that test, we switched to have two sets of two panels, which dropped our total amperage down to about 18. And that really helped us reduce our voltage drop. So not only did we add one panel, we made all the other panels way more efficient. So it's been an easy week, so easy that it didn't seem worth filming. Every day, like clockwork, by 4 p.m., this thing is filled back up, fridge has been running flawlessly, everything's working great, which is what we were after. So let's go take a look at the panels and I'll show you what we changed. So if you're wondering what 1.4 kilowatts or 1400 watts of solar looks like, this is it. It's about 60 inches deep. I'm six foot tall, so figure four-ish feet tall. Uh, and I've really been happy with these panels. They're super old technology to compare to the uh, five facial and the super lightweight stuff that's on the market now. However, these older panels offer a great value proposition. I picked up a pallet of these uh, last Black Friday from Signature Solar for about 700 bucks. So that's 10 on a pallet. That's a screaming deal for this much solar power. And then I've also picked up these Integra Rack 30 mounts from Signature Solar as well. I've been very, very happy with them. They're not the most inexpensive, but man, they go together so easy and they're so versatile. You can put any size panel with it and it looks pretty professional. If you see in our other videos, my homemade mounts, they work, but they're not super attractive. This looks pretty good come look at this from the side or even the back what you'll see is that I really didn't even level this ground I eyeballed it I looked for a spot that was about as flat as I could find and I just went with it and it works just fine I'm sure that they would advise you find perfectly level ground or level it yourself but one of the reasons I really like these mounts is just that they are so forgiving the conduit ties everything together and it's just been awesome and so the big difference under here it's just that rather than having the triple adapter, we have double adapters and we run positive and positive, negative and negative to these double adapters. And from there, we have a 100 foot run of MC4 cable that takes you to the house. And so this 100 foot run of 10 gauge wire is actually the source of a lot of our headaches. Because it's only 10 gauge, it gives us a little bit more voltage drop when we're running 27 amps. And when you have that situation, you have two choices, either buy a more expensive, thicker wire to reduce resistance or shrink your circuit and run less amps. So in this situation, we're running less amps that really boosted our production, which has been great. With the 1400 watt array and the Anchor F3800, we have achieved our set it and forget it fridge circuit for the house. The Anchor did a good job powering the shop for a year, which was cool. That's initially what we got it for. But now hopefully we can add one more panel to each leg max out the solar input on that thing and really see what it can do for us on a month-to-month -month basis to help us save money while being prepared for emergencies. A lot of people ask if it's worth the extra money to get one of these all-in-one units to start or if you should build your own system with a uh, semi-exploded setup like an all-in-one inverter with a server rack battery or go all the way back to the extreme of individual components mounted on a wall in pure chaos. All of that overwhelmed me. It was easy for me to understand watts, volts, and amps, right? That, that's all pretty simple, and I could wrap my head around that. And then it was easy for me to measure the thing that I want to run and how long I want to run it. And with that basic information, I was able to pick my all-in-one unit. And once I picked my all-in-one unit, I started setting up solar panels. Once I started setting up solar panels, I became familiar with the wire, the MC4 connectors, XT60, XT61, things like that. So it's been a gradual learning experience 
And because of that, I would say, yes, I think starting with an all-in-one power station is a really good way to go. You don't necessarily get the best price per watt hour, but it's a really easy way to learn. And now that I'm becoming more comfortable with it, and I feel like I have a good understanding of it, I can start moving into more semi-permanent setups using something like an EG4 all-in-one inverter that I mount on the wall and some server rack batteries. And the cool thing about this stuff is, just because you upgrade or you go to a different system, you don't lose capability. You still have this, you still have portable power wherever you need it, and that's cool. Just because we're not powering our house with it doesn't mean it's not gonna be super helpful during a hurricane, uh, for camping. Last year when my nieces came out here, they had to have a portable heater in their tent, believe it or not. And I learned at that time that you can move this, but just because you can doesn't mean you should, and you should not necessarily drag this across sand. Uh, but it did work and everybody was warm and happy. So I'm, it's not lost on me that something like this is still very expensive, but it, it holds its value for you and the fact that you're always prepared for whatever could come. If you made it this far, bless your heart. I know I ramble sometimes, but I appreciate you watching. Uh, if you liked anything about it, feel free to like and subscribe. There'll be plenty more to come.